A lot of people don't have that option, you know. I made a deal with the devil. I'm sticking around as long as I can. Okay, our first comedian tonight is Gordon J from Dundalk. Um, he gets laid a lot. So please welcome Gordon J. Oh. Thank you, Ice Prick. I'm sorry, Ice Pick Rick. Ice Pick. I, I'm sorry. I didn't, honest to God, I didn't mean to say Ice Prick Rick. I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, Aloha. Let's try it again. Aloha. That's better. All right. Listen, I have to confess to you, I am not from the state of Hawaii. And thanks to the low wages and the miserable taxes I pay in the free state of Maryland, I can't afford the vacation in Hawaii. I dress like this to make myself feel good. It's like being on a permanent vacation without ever leaving Essex. You have to use some imagination. I'm driving down Eastern Avenue and those light poles to me are palm trees. And Back River is a blue lagoon. Now, if you smell that place lately, you know that takes some frickin' imagination, huh? Come on. There is another reason for dressing like this. Guys, pay attention. Pay attention to this. Take notes if you want. Napkins, pencils are available. When you dress like this, you can go into any club or just walk down the street walk up to any woman and say, Aloha, wanna lay? <laughs> Works 95% of the time. You get a phone number, you get a date, and you may even get... Okay. But I have to warn you, if you try that on some airhead bimbo who doesn't know this thing is called a lay, you're gonna get kicked in the nuts. <laughs> Two times! Goodness. You know, I've never been married, and I don't have any children that I know of. <laughs> uh, I thank God for that. I hate to know there's a little Gordy out there saying, Mom, where's the sperm donor? Why doesn't he give me Christmas presents? Shh, he doesn't know you're alive. Well, which is a good thing, because alimony and, and child support, I mean, it can... <laughs> Remia, you know what I mean? I don't know what I mean because I haven't been there, but my friends have, and they've taken second jobs just to pay child support, and they never get to see the kid. I mean, yeah, explain that one to me. But anyway, um, what is it with parents who come up with these cute little pet names for their children's genitalia? And I'm talking about Susie and Wee Wee. <laughs> Now, come on, you know you've heard these terms before. I grew up with Susie and Wee Wee. And this is how it began. My mom told me, and I vividly remember this, and it will never go away. Gordy, that is your Wee Wee. It is your private part. You may never show a girl your Wee Wee. Because she doesn't have a Wee Wee, and she has to sit down when she pees. And it pisses her off. And if she sees her Wee Wee, she's going to yank it off. I was 16 years old when I first got laid, and I swear to God, that memory came back loud and clear. I'm in the room with this girl, and I remember, Jesus Christ, she's gonna yank it off when she sees it. I know she's... But you know, time, I, I figured it out. After 16 years, you can't pull it off. It's stuck there, I know this, right? But I wasn't taking any chances. We're in the room, I'm not undressed yet. And I said, uh, excuse me, uh, how do you feel about having to sit down to pee? <laughs> she said, I don't like it. So I moved across the room before I did that thing there. And, uh, and I was kind of frightened. So while I was still across the room, I said, by the way, honey, do you have any knives or scissors on you? I mean, I know you can't pull it, but you could. Uh, Jeez, it was hard to get an erection after that. I was scared to death. <laughs> Took me 20 more years to get laid. <laughs> mm. Susie and Wee Wee. 
You know what, folks? Why don't you just be honest with kids? They can handle it. Tell them what their private parts are really called. It's a vagina and a cock. I mean, come on, grow up. They can handle it. I could handle it. Goodness gracious. You know, I don't know if you can see. Well, it's not that good, but I'm losing the hair off my legs. And this started to bother me eh, about 20 years ago. I started noticing it. And earlier this summer, I'm at work, and we're getting off, and we're all in the parking lot, and there's like, you know, 20 people there, guys and girls. And this prick, who I thought was my friend, had to yell out in front of everybody, Hey, Gordy, do you shave your legs? I, I, and I noticed all the women looking and giggling and pointing at my legs, so I, I had to stand up and be, I said, Hey, I'm a man. I don't shave my legs. And I pluck them. I'm a man. It hurts more that way. But it did bother me. So I went home and I did some extensive internet research. And when I say extensive internet research, what I mean is I googled, what the fuck happened to the hair on my legs? A whole bunch of answers came back, but the number one answer was low T. Low testosterone. And as Google would have it, right next to the answer was an advertisement for a supplement of testosterone. $14.95 plus shipping and handling, so I bought it. 30 days later, not one more fucking hair on my leg. But look, I'm not complaining. The shit did work. I've got a frickin' jungle going on right in this area. I mean, it grows in so quick and so thick. Every three days, I gotta get out the scissors and the clippers and do a manscape thing, you know what I mean? First thing I tried was that, that traditional triangle that most of us have, you know? That grew back in, then I did a heart shape. That grew back, and I wanted to get in touch with my feminine side, so I did one of those cute little... I want to see you Monday morning and the psychiatrist's office. You got, you got it, honey. And your name is? Monday. Your name is? Oh, Say it again. <laughs> Officer Curry, you also know down the psychiatrist. Officer Curry, I'll be there. I see you every Monday. I, I, <laughs> every Monday. <laughs> and twice on Tuesday. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, honey, I'm sorry, my wee wee just stood up here. <laughs> but it's not that big, Sonny, something. Oh, oh, show some Susie. Show some Tom. Are you getting late? I'm going to stretch it out a little more. Okay, baby. Come here. I gave you the technique. You want to do some grind? <laughs> Big hand for Becky. Yeah. All right, Nani, you'll see me Monday. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, God. I have no idea where the hell I was now. <laughs> what day is this? I'll be there. I swear to you, I'll be there. Yeah. And I'm going to have it split just for you. <laughs> that way I can wake I thought I split something else. All right. You got, you got it. Hey, you heard it. That's a promise, right? Huh? Who wants to come and watch? <laughs> You're so good. But see you one day. Thank you, honey. <laughs> I love hecklers. <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, uh, the hair on my legs. Uh... Oh, yeah, so back to the thing. Back to the thing. Uh, the last thing I did to get in touch with my feminine side was I, I did one of those little runway strips that girls do, you know, uh, and see, I broke the momentum. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Take a minute there, you know. <laughs> oh my god. No Susie. My god. All right. So anyway, Susie, we, we, we did that, and that's all over with. Oh, Jesus. 
Let me uh, let me tell you about my old man. I my my father, you know, Lord loving. He's still alive, but Lord loving because <laughs> I don't like him. But anyway, um, he was a hard worker and he worked at Bethlehem Steel for like 35 years and retired. And his generation believed that they were the sufferers, and we were just a bunch of pussies because that generation. Whoa! Yeah. For example. When I was growing up, it was very hot. We had just window fans. And finally, we had central air conditioning put in. But the problem is, my dad, being such a tight wild with the money, didn't want to ever turn it on. And we would say, hey, hey, Dad, uh, can we turn on the AC? You don't know what hot is. I work at Bethlehem Steel at the blast furnaces. I know what hot is. Well, yeah, okay, Dad, thank you very much, but, uh, you know, your wife is melting, my balls are sticking to my legs. <laughs> Just five minutes, Dad. You don't know! Jesus. And then he complains about children having school buses. Hey, look at that! School bus right there in the corner, you gotta ride to school. When I was young, I walked to school six miles uphill! In the rain, in the snow, in tornadoes. I know what. <laughs> and here's what really did. I don't get this one. After every argument like that, my dad says, and I quote, those were the good old days. <laughs> Holy shit, Dad! If those were the good old days, what do I have to look forward to? <laughs> oh, boy. oh, man. Where's that heckler? I want her back here. <laughs> Damn. Son of a bitch. All right, well, listen, I want to tell you, folks, it really means a lot to a comic to get up here and have a beautiful audience like this. It might not be the biggest crowd, but you all participated and laughed, and I loved it. Thank you very much. I'll be back again soon. I am Gordon J. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. <laughs> Thank you, much. Great job. Well, unfortunately, we don't have any other comedians here on time yet. We, we sh we'll have a guy coming. He told me he was going to be late. 